God who has never lost a battle. Amen. And the songwriter said, and he never will. Amen. 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 So glad to have even our full praise team back, Sister Scott. I know we were back last week, but good to have you back on today. Amen. 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 Good morning to our Facebook and YouTube family. Always glad to have you in our worship experience Amen. this morning. So glad to see our college student, the Kennedy, who is here. Deontay is here this morning. Amen. 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 We've got Matt and Deontay here. Amen. Both boys are here this morning. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now let us bow our hands for prayer. Merciful God, our Father, we come now to this hour of worship. Worship in your word, God. We ask you now, as always, to hide the man servant behind the sacred yeah. vest. Yeah. Oh, God, let my imperfection not be a distraction to anyone today. God, we want them to see your glory. Yeah. Oh, God, we want them to hear your word. Bless your man, oh, God, who will stand because he's not fit to stand. But thank you for allowing me to stand anyhow. Yeah. Oh, God, we ask you now to go with me as I share what you have placed on my heart. And we know, God, that your word will not return to you void. For these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Would you turn with me to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 9 through 20. And I'm using the NIV version for our translation. A familiar passage. Mark, the fifth chapter the ninth through the 20th verse. Uh, the NIV is our translation. I ask that once you have found it, that you would give God word reverence by standing to your feet. Mark, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, fifth chapter, verses nine through 20. And again, the NIV version is our translation version really want to focus on the end of this particular passage, not so much <clears throat> about the first part of it, but it will give us context. All right. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? Uh -huh. My name is Legions, he replied, for we are many. Uh -huh. And he begged Jesus again and again <coughs> not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. Uh -huh. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Uh -huh. Allow us to go into them. Yeah. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. Uh -huh. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind. Yeah. Oh, and they were afraid. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Those who had seen it uh, told the people what had happened to the demon possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Uh -huh. Then the people began to beg, uh, plead with Jesus to leave their region. Yeah. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. Yeah, yeah. Verse 19 Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all of the people were amazed. As you take your seats, our key verse is verse 18 and 19. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how 
he has had mercy on you. Yeah. And Jesus said, go home go to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Yeah. Yeah. Beloved, just for a few minutes, I'd like to preach from this thought, the glory in Jesus saying no. The glory in Jesus saying no. Right. I ask that if you not turn to your neighbor, but just say this uh, and repeat after me. The first, the first, let me start again. I want you to repeat after me. Say this. The first, the first place that our lives should make a difference is at home. Let me say that again. The first place that our lives should make a difference is at home. Y'all let that settle in right there. In this text today, we find Jesus responding with yes in so many ways for this demon-possessed man, for we have become so accustomed now to prosperity preaching that dictates that every time that we make a request, Jesus will say yes. And so when he doesn't, we have a problem with Jesus. Have I got a witness? Uh, in this awesome text today, Jesus displays a love and a mighty power that you will see <laughs> Jesus say yes in so many ways, but at the end of the text, when we are sure that Jesus will say yes, he surprises us with a response of no. Yeah. Have Jesus ever told you no? Yeah. All of us should remember when we receive a no from Jesus. Our focus should not get lost in that note, but we should reflect on how many times that Jesus has responded with a wonderful yes. All right, all right. Let's take a look at uh, the yeses that Jesus has responded to this demon-possessed man. Well, when we see that Jesus responded to the Holy Spirit, he got up and got into a boat and cross over to the Sea of Galilee. If you read the first part of the scripture, Jesus got in a boat after ministering, and he went over to the other side, and that's where he met this demon-possessed man. Right. Uh-huh. And then Jesus met this man who was demon-possessed, cutting himself, and was isolated, living in a cave. And, and Jesus said yes to bring deliverance to this man. Jesus said yes to casting out the demons in this man. Jesus said yes to send the demons into the pig where they were drowned. Uh -huh. Jesus said yes to give this man his mind back. If you remember what I just said, that when they looked upon him, he had his mind back. Jesus said yes to bringing him resources for he not only had his mind back, but he was sitting under control and he was closed when they found him. Yeah. Look at all of the yeses that Jesus said to this man. Yeah. We can see that Jesus was willing on so many accounts to say yes. Yeah. Beloved, before you get too carried away with your emotions of despair because you heard no from Jesus, remember now, remember the yeses that Jesus has given you in this last 24 hours. I, I'm not talking about last month, last year. I want you to think about the last 24 hours of the yeses that Jesus had given you. He allowed you to rest well last night. Yes. He kept you safe all night long. Yes. He woke you up this morning in your right mind. Yes. He told all of your body parts to get up and work like they're supposed to do and to dress yourself. Yes. He provided protection on the highway as you drove to the church this morning. Yes. He made sure that the car didn't break down on the way. Yes. He said yes so that you could walk in here without any help. Yes. He said yes so that you could see me and understand what I'm saying about his wonderful blessing and his wonderful word. Jesus said yes. Aren't you glad that you got a God that not only if he said no, but he'll say more yes, then he'll say no. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, for your yes. Oh, Lord, you are mighty. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, I thank you for your yes. Are, are you willing to shout for all of the goodness of God? 
that he has done for you yeah. and told you yes. Hallelujah. Yes, the glory in Jesus saying no. Here in the text this morning, we find this demon-possessed man now free of demons and he is so grateful to Jesus, he makes a request that seems reasonable. For he requests to follow Jesus on his ministry journey. Well, but surprisingly, uh, uh, Jackson, he received a note from Jesus to follow right. him. Jesus tells the man to go home. Uh -huh. uh -huh. He says, go home. Uh -huh. At first, when you look at this response from Jesus, it's puzzling because Jesus has asked others to follow him and they gave up their way of life yeah, yeah. and they followed Jesus. Yeah. But Jesus had to go to them. Uh -huh. But And so here we find a man who didn't wait for Jesus to come to him. He decided to go to Jesus and he volunteered uh -huh. his service. Jesus didn't ask him to follow. He decided he wanted to follow. Oh, I wish we had more folk in the house of God that we don't have to ask you to follow, but that you're willing to follow. You're willing to do ministry. We don't have to brow beat you and we don't have to beg and crawl to you because you said I am willing because of what the Lord has done for me. I've got a place that I want to serve. I have a heart to serve. Oh, I wish we could get more folks would be like this demon free man now. He says, Jesus, because of what you've done to me and because of how you changed my life, I'm willing to follow you. Is there anybody out there this morning that's ready to give up your life to serve? Are you willing to join a ministry? If you haven't done anything in this year, then you ought to think about what can I do for God? He's been too good. He's been too great for me. For me just to come into worship and absorb all of this word and go back home and do nothing but come back and sit on this bench again. Lord, show me where I can serve. Lord, show me where I can work. Yeah. Oh, somebody said the harvest is plentiful. Oh, but the laborers are few. Jesus, Jesus, I, I'm puzzled here, Jesus. Jesus, don't you need help? Jesus, Jesus, aren't you looking for a few good men? Well, when we take a deep look into this text this morning, we will find that Jesus knew what was best for the man first and then what was best for his ministry. Yeah. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Jesus, Jesus recognized what was best for the man first and then what was best for his ministry. We as leaders of ministry, hear me now, should always remember the person, family first. Oh, I know how difficult it is because uh, when you become a deacon or when you become a trustee, and oh God, if you ever step into the pastoral role, uh, everybody feels that they own you. Everybody feels that they ought to have a part of you. Uh, and they don't even consider a first lady or the children. They don't. They don't. They think that because God has called you, you ought to be an ever ready bunny. You ought to work 24-7. You don't get tired. You don't have a reason to get tired because you're doing the Lord work. But, but beloved, Jesus recognized what the man needed first and then what his ministry also needed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm telling you, if you are assigned or to a ministry and you're a leader, now you need to make sure that you consider the person's family first yeah, yeah. before the ministry. Mm -hmm. But now let me put a little check mark right here. All right. Jesus knows though when you are using your family as an excuse to be unfaithful to the ministry. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't think you can fool Jesus. You're talking about, well, I got to be here with my family. I got that Jesus. No, no, no. You're just using that as an excuse because you really just don't want to work. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, don't, don't play. 
play me. Don't play me like that. I know your family. I'm the one that established your family. So don't use your family as an excuse. Yeah. So the question, beloved, the question that I'm sure you want to have answered this morning, Pastor Benjamin, how, how can one see glory? Because that word glory carries a significant point. Right. How can one see glory in Jesus saying no? Yeah. Well, I've got two things that I want to share with you that if you really take a look at this in perspective, you will see glory in Jesus saying no. Right. I know we don't like to hear no because no means that something has been denied. Yeah. No means that something isn't going to be granted. No means that I'm not going to have my way. But beloved, when Jesus says no, there's glory in it if you see it like this demon free man saw it. Well, here's my first point. Here's my first point. We're going to be done quick today. Here's my first point. Two points is all I have. Two is all I have. The first thing uh, that you've got to look at is this. If you don't dislike where the no places you, you'll see glory. Let me say that again. If you don't dislike where the no places you, you'll see glory. In society today, everybody is striving to be in a new place. Everybody is pushing to be in a, at a new level. Yeah. Everyone is looking to have something different than they had last year. Right. But can you be satisfied with familiarity? Oh. Joseph, hear me now, Joseph was 17 years old when his brother sold him into captivity. Mm -hmm. And then he was 30 years old before he became the right-hand man of Pharaoh. Serving his family, he uh, blessed Canaan and Egypt, and he saved them from a famine. Thirteen years, God said no to his deliverance. Can you be content uh, as Joseph? For we never find in the text when we read that particular passage that Joseph was uh, angry uh, when they forgot about him in that person when he was supposed to speak up for him when he got out. Two years passed, and he forgot to say what Joseph told him to say. And then Joseph then gets out. But you don't find anywhere in the text that Joseph rebuked him or got mad with Jesus. In the text, Jesus tells uh, this eager follower uh, to go home. I know you need some help, Jesus. You just started your ministry. But Jesus said, go home. The scripture said, now, he begged Jesus. That means that he just didn't say, Jesus, can I follow you? He got on his knees and, oh, Jesus, Jesus, for what you've done for me, Jesus, I can't go back. I, I want to go wherever you are. If there anybody in here wants to be where Jesus is, somebody said, I want to go where Jesus is. I, I can understand how this man felt. Can you imagine being in a cave? For over 12 years, cutting yourself, bleeding, uh, living among dead things, can't be with your family, walking around naked and ducking the cold. And now Jesus cast out these demons, not just one boy. He said they were legions. Uh, there were many in him. And Jesus brought his mind back to sanity. Jesus brought control back to his spirit. Jesus dressed him. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know if I was him, I would want to follow Jesus as well. Yeah. And he begged Jesus, Jesus, yeah. let me go with you. Yeah. But Jesus said no. Uh -huh. Jesus told him to go home. Yeah. Oh my God. So you don't find though anywhere after Jesus told him to go home, you got it right there in front of you. Do y'all see anywhere where he got upset? No. Because he was rejected to follow Jesus? No. Did, did you see anywhere where he said, but Jesus, you don't know what you're missing. I'm a good man. You should want me on your team. Yeah. You don't see that anywhere. Yeah. But he did what Jesus asked him to do. Yeah. Yeah. Not only did he go home, yeah. he told his story. For he testified 
of the goodness right. of Jesus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Jesus told him to go home and do something different than he had planned. Mm -hmm. Can you take uh, advice uh, from Jesus? Yeah. When Jesus yeah. changed your plan, yeah. are you able to say, thank you, Lord? Yeah. Are you able to say, Lord, whatever your will is, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So the man, uh, Jesus said to him, go home, and he followed Jesus' advice. And he eagerly responded to Jesus' quest. He went home. Yes. Beloved, sometimes new isn't better. That's right. And different is not where it's at. Right. Let me say that again. Sometimes new isn't better. Sure. And different is not where it's at. Right. So many of us have moved when God has sent you a message to stay right where you are. Right. To stay with familiarity. So, so many brothers have messed up a good home messed up a good relationship because uh, in their head they thought that what they had wasn't worth it because they looked across the street when they really should have stayed with what was familiar and now they got a sister that they can't even leave the house. He asked, where you going? When you going to get back? Don't you know you got to do this and you got to do that? And the man can't have no peace. Why? Because he should have stayed with familiar He should have stayed where God had placed Oh, I'm talking to somebody this morning. You, you better to move and God is saying, stay where you're at. I'm saying no to you. Yes, that, that spirit that won't let your plan take uh, fruition, God is really saying no. He's saying no not to hurt you. He's never wanted to hurt us. But he's saying no for a good reason. He's saying no so that he can help us. No. And so, you don't, uh, you see, uh, most folks want uh, to move to something new, and, and I know you want to move uh, to that new house because the neighbor moved away. And you said, where are you? And the neighbor said, I'm across town. I left the east side, and I moved to the west side. Yeah. And you said, well, I, I'm going to be looking for me one, too. No, no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Why not? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, that new taxes that those neighbors are facing and that up has got them all upset. Yeah. And see, you are in that house that was built in 1960. It's paid off. You don't have the taxes to worry about. Yeah, yeah. And you can sleep at night. Yeah. See, they all up wondering how, if I get laid off, I'm going to be messed up. I don't know how we're going to keep up with the Joneses because we bit off too much that we can't chew. Oh, uh, sometimes it's good to stay right where you're at. Somebody says stay right where you're at. I know you want to embrace some new friends, uh, but in this economy and in this covert 19, you better stick with the people you know. Oh, I know, I know. You want to go out, you want to find new friends, but right now it ain't safe to let everybody come into your face. You better make sure you know who comes to your space. Sometimes you better stick with what's what familiar. And the Lord is saying to somebody, stay where you're at. Uh, you see, you see, you see, that man had been away from his family for some length of time, yeah. cutting himself in the cave that he was isolating in from his family and friends. Look here, Jesus knew that his family had been without a father and a husband for so long. So he sends the man back to a family that needed him the most. Yeah. Look at Jesus. Jesus needing good workers. Jesus needing men. Jesus needing help. But Jesus recognized that this man needed to go home yeah. instead of following him. I told you that the first difference that needs to be made if you're going to follow Jesus ought to be made where? At home. Uh-huh. So let me move on. I told you, if you don't dislike where the no place is here, you can find glory in it. Yeah. Well, my second and final point is this. Uh, the glory is, is in Jesus saying, no, if you could see Jesus' wisdom in his no. If you could see the wisdom yeah. in Jesus' no. 
Then you will find glory. But see, as I've been preaching uh, one and two about the wisdom, you've got to have wisdom about talking to you about the Holy Spirit. That's why you want wisdom. All right. Jesus' ministry was taking what? The gospel to who? The Jews. First. Yeah. Not the Gentiles. Yeah. Right. See, this man was a Gentile. How do I know that? Yeah. When those folk lost all of those pigs, yeah. they got upset. Yeah. They told Jesus, I don't know who you are, but you're going to have to get up out of here. Yeah. You're killing too much of our livestock. Right. Ain't no Jews going to get upset by some pigs dying. Yeah. The Jews don't want to deal with pigs. Yeah. And so they said to Jesus, I don't care what you've done for the brother, uh, but you're messing up our uh, profitability. Uh, Isn't that interesting? you got to be careful who you align yourself as friends. Yeah. For if you read the first part of the text, it says they had bound him with chains and he broke them. Well, he didn't put the chains on himself. Who do you think put chains on him? The folks, the friends that he was around. Well, if I found out that now you could be free yeah. of those chains and you could be free of what? The depression that you're in. You could be free of the calamity that have been taking you down. Yeah. I should be excited about that. Yeah. But they got more excited about their pig being lost yeah. than this man getting deliverance. Right. I tell you right now, there are some people are more concerned about what they lost than what you gained. Yeah. Anytime you start talking to a friend and they start talking about more about what they lost than what God has done for you, you need to cut them loose. Because they don't care about really you. They just want to talk about who? Themselves. And so Jesus, Jesus, Jesus recognized that this man needed to go home. So this wisdom, Jesus tells them, he tells them that I'm sending this man home because he is a Gentile. What better place for him to witness than to the folk that he's familiar with? Yeah. I told you, if you don't get upset with the no places you, you'll see glory. Yeah. He's a Gentile. Why? He knows how they think. Yeah. He knows that his word would carry weight. If Jesus took this man on his missionary journey, Jesus was going to who? The Jews. Well, y'all know, when Paul was getting ready to take Timothy, whose daddy was a Greek who was a Gentile, what did he do? I told you last week, he circumcised Paul, I mean circumcised Timothy because he needed to have a greater witness. And so Jesus said that if you're going to go with me, you ain't road ready. You need to go home to the place where you can have the most effect. And so Jesus sent this man home. Home to uh, convert the folk to Christ is currently where he's at. Yeah. That's the type of wisdom you can count on from the Holy Spirit. Amen. That word, that's a word for somebody. You, you are so eager to burn up the highway across the city and across the state to witness. But God is saying you are, you got plenty of work to do right at home. Oh, I know people believe in foreign mission. That's great. I believe in foreign mission, but home mission become more important before you go where? To foreign mission. Everybody wants to go to Haiti. Everybody wants to go across over to Brazil. Everybody wants to leave the United States. Well, there's plenty of work to do at home. Can I ask you this question? Are you helping everybody with their issues and their business, but mm. doing nothing for home? Mm. Mm. Well, they can always find you. Where are you? I'm over at so-and-so house. And your house need help. Mm. You're always taking care of somebody else's children, your children going without. Are you always doing for somebody else and neglecting home? Well, let me come on. Are, are you helping all these other churches in the city? Uh, but your name on the roll at Mueller first? Uh, are you going and visiting all the time and paying even your tithes to them? But then when you are in need, you're always coming back to us? Oh, I know y'all don't like me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a folk, there's a folk. They even was big enough to tell me. I went to so-and-so church and I left my money over there. And I'm like, Pastor, is that right? I said, uh, <laughs> 
This was Sister Doreen's quote, am I boo boo the fool? I don't even have to answer that. Your name on roll here. And you go someplace else and you leave your money there. I'm not talking about an offer, I'm talking about your time. But then you come back here and want the benefits here. You can't serve two masters. Amen. I can't pass the beautiful first, but everywhere you look, you find me at uh, a Mount Zion, always blessing them, but never taking home. Oh, let me move on, beloved. You've got to see Jesus' wisdom in the know. Jesus knew that this man was not ready to go with him because he had been out of his mind in the cave. For a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. Don't miss that. Jesus recognized that he had been what? Out of his mind a long time in the cave. Let me just say this. Don't miss this. Just because they joined the church last week doesn't mean that they are ready for ministry leadership this week. I know you're looking for some faithful members. I know you're looking for people that you want to help you. But let them sit for a while. Amen. Let's see what they are about. Uh -huh. For many have come into the door on fire. Yeah. But it didn't take about three weeks for somebody to offend them. And they turned and said, I just ain't my place. <laughs> well, 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 if God has sent you here, don't you know that you're going to get your toes stepped on? Amen. Don't you know that you're going to get offended? Why? Yeah. Because this is a hospital. Yeah. And anytime you go to the hospital, there's some sick folk. So you don't leave because there's some sick folk in there. Yeah. You just make sure you understand what yeah. flow you're on. Yeah. Or you make sure that who's talking to you, is it the doctor talking to you? Does he have a white coat on? Or does he have another coat on? You got to make sure who you're dealing with. Yeah. And so many folks, so many folks get offended because uh, they want to be in leadership to the next week. And you just got here. Uh, too often we rush people to the front of the leadership when they have not had the opportunity to sit under someone and study the ministry and seek God's direction. You see, Jesus, Jesus recognized this man has been out of his mind, Deacon Brown, for years. And now he ain't ready to go with me to the Jews. Oh, I'm going to put him in a place, but that place need to be where he can be most effective. Yeah. Right. Just because she has finished three cooking courses, right. you don't put her in charge of Thanksgiving dinner. No, baby. Oh, that's the main meal. I can't put you over Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to let you make some Kool-Aid and make the cough down. But you ain't going to be over the turkey to have the dressing and the candy yam. No, no, no. No, no, no. Can't do that, can't do that. And let me know if you got somebody in your house that you're doing that to. Don't invite me, don't invite me. Don't invite me. Y'all let me go on here. Yes, yes, yes. Look, look, you, you got to see the wisdom. You got to see the wisdom of God's no. God's no has a place to help us. He has a no to make sure that we do the right thing. Yeah. Let me say this to someone. Are you rushing so fast to prove that you, to your friends, that you are making it, that you're over or extending yourself, mm. that you're purchasing all of this stuff to show that you're successful? Yeah. It's okay to drive that car another year. Yeah. It's okay to wear that suit a few more times. Yeah. <laughs> Stop trying to impress people who are not even looking. Yeah, right. Stop trying to impress people who are not even looking. Yeah. Take on the wisdom of God. But he says, no, you don't need any of that. Trust God. Yeah. Jesus did not let him, uh, but said, go home to your own people. Yeah. And tell them how much the Lord had done for you. Yeah. And how he had had mercy on you. Yeah, yeah. Beloved, I, I'm so glad that this man uh, recognized that it was important uh, to look at the wisdom of Jesus. No, yeah. for when we look at uh, the last verse, verse 20, and so the man went away and 
began to tell in the, the Capitals yeah. how much Jesus had done for him. Yeah. Yeah. And because he saw uh, the wisdom yeah. of the no, uh, yeah. Yeah. the Bible said, and all of the people were amazed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at Jesus knowing uh, what to do with this man. Yeah. Right? Look at Jesus saying that if you don't dislike where I place you, why uh, there will be glory that will come into your life. Right. Yeah. Right. Look at Jesus saying that if you uh, allow uh, the wisdom that I'm giving you, even though it sounds like I'm rejecting you, uh, you will have uh, great glory and you'll be prosperous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Bible said that all of the people yeah. uh, were amazed uh, yeah. of what this man said about my Lord uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. your Savior. Yeah. Beloved, as I come to a close, uh, yeah. I'm so glad uh, that Jesus embraced uh, the word no uh, on my behalf. Yeah. Maybe you are not glad about the no's that he's given to you. Uh, uh, but beloved, I'm glad uh, yeah. of the no's uh, that Jesus uh, said to me. Uh, yeah. uh, for when uh, he found me, uh, yeah. he said no. Uh, yeah. No, I can't leave you like I found you. Yeah. Oh, is there anybody yeah. excited yeah. to know what? That Jesus embraced the word no. Yeah. For when he found you uh, in your mess, uh, yeah. Jesus said, no, uh, I can't leave you yeah. like I found you. Yeah. Jesus picked you up, uh, yeah. dust you off, uh, yeah. put your feet on solid ground. Yeah. I'm so glad to know it, uh, that he didn't leave it like he found me. Uh, when the enemy got upset uh, and tried to turn me back to, to Satan, uh, I'm so glad uh, that Jesus shouted another word in my spirit. Uh, when my enemies came to eat of my flesh, uh, Jesus said, oh, no, no, uh, he's one of ours now. Uh, Jesus uttered the word, no, uh, no weapon. Form the enemy yeah. shall prosper. Aren't you glad? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm so glad that he embraced the word no. For late in the midnight hour, when I felt so all alone, I heard Jesus snuggle up beside me. And he whispered this song to me. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one can heal our soul disease. There's that word. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus. Jesus' flesh uh, failed him uh, in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus was about to give up uh, and throw in the towel. Uh, but the word of God came back to him. Yeah, and he said, no, no, no. Uh, not my will. Uh, but God will be done. Uh, Jesus uh, was going to give it up. Uh, but he said, no, Satan. Uh, I've got an appointment. With Calvary, yeah. aren't you glad? Yeah. Jesus didn't say, I won't go. He said, Yes, I'll go. Yeah. John 10 and 28. I give them eternal life. Yeah. They should never perish. Yeah. Here comes this word. No one yeah. will snatch them out of my hands. Yeah. Beloved, I'm so glad yeah. that no one, no, no one. No.